Congratulations, you've made it to the end of a course in production. Throughout this course, focusing on production in 3D animation, we've gone over the broad strokes of what production is, what we do, and how to do it well. For my last video today, I'm going to be going over my own best practices of what I do day to day to ensure my own efficacy and success on the job. If you've enjoyed this course or are interested in hearing more from me, please check out my blog, theyakoccidental.blogspot.com, for more on work, play, and renewal. My first best practice is keeping notebooks. Production is taking notes and disseminating information. Write it down. Don't make people repeat information to you, though you can, of course, ask clarifying questions as need be. Whether it's in a notebook, on your phone, or on the studio laptop, take a moment to make sure you have everything recorded. A lot can happen in a day, and taking notes helps track why you and your team made a certain decision, key action items, and changes in workflow, all of which you might have to report at some point. Another best practice of mine is knowing everyone's names. To me, this is just common decency. You should know everyone's name and what their role is in making your show. Besides being just good manners, this keeps people engaged and communication lines open. I find there is an odd and rather unfortunate tendency in the animation industry that the higher up you go, and I very much include production in this, there is somehow this weird thing where remembering people's names becomes an honor that you bestow upon someone. Not only is this attitude unkind and unnecessary, it's proven to be an ineffective leadership practice. To this point, I invite you to consider Amy Cuddy's words in her book Presence. She cites research saying that in leaders, we tend to value warmth over competence. Why do we prioritize warmth over competence? Because from an evolutionary perspective, it's more crucial to our survival to know whether a person deserves our trust. If he doesn't, we'd better keep our distance because he's potentially dangerous, especially if he's competent. We do value people who are capable, especially in circumstances where the trait is necessary, but we only notice that after we've judged their trustworthiness. A newer best practice of mine is tracking bigger events that impact the day-to-day -day work. This is something that I'm still experimenting with, and the general idea is that when something big and unexpected happens at the studio, track it. The strategy is related to something that I read in Annie Duke's book, Thinking in Bets. She says, We have the opportunity to learn from the way the future unfolds to improve our beliefs and decisions going forward. The more evidence we get from experience, the less uncertainty we have about our beliefs and choices. Actively using outcomes to examine our beliefs and bets closes the feedback loop, reducing uncertainty. This is the heavy lifting of how we learn. For example, if there is a power outage at your studio, book it into the calendar. The action itself helps you to remember the significance of the event as well as the impact that it had on your workflow. I personally do this in two ways. The first is booking things into my private work calendar, and the second thing I've done is trying to keep a captain's log. A captain's log to me is basically just a private running document where I track these top line events, if for nothing else but my own sanity. My next best practice is throwing ideas out there until something sticks. Being in production is in your constant stream of problem solving or collaborating with your teams to come up with a better way of doing things. Something that I do here is just keep throwing out ideas. Eventually something will stick, or better yet, it will inspire an answer or idea from someone else on your team. I also try to remember face-to-face -face communication wherever possible. I realize this is a tough one, especially this year with so many of us working remotely. As we all know, body language and our tone of voice is a lot of our communication. Another thing to remember with face-to-face -face is that it literally shows your teams that you're there. Remember, we work with artists. There are a lot of different communication and learning styles. And if something seems off, just talk to the person face-to-face. -face. I also really encourage you to thank people for their work. When you can, thank your teams for their hard work and compliment them on whatever work they do that catches your eye. This can be as simple as shooting one of your animators a message and telling them how much you liked the animation on X character and X shot. It doesn't even need to be somebody on your team. For example, did the culture club at your studio recently put on a social event that you very much enjoyed? Thank them for their work and their efforts on this event. These little things can go a long way in maintaining positivity and kindness in a work environment that is so very often overwhelmed with OT, tight deadlines, and otherwise stressful working conditions. My last best practice is actually admitting when I don't know something. Production is not about having all of the answers. We should of course know the schedule, agreed upon workflow, take notes, that sort of a thing, but we are not the end-all be-all. Production holds things together, but the magic of course comes from our artists. If you don't know something, invite in the expertise of your peers by asking them their ideas, opinions, and advice. If you admit when you don't know something, not only are you giving yourself the opportunity to learn something new, you're giving somebody else the space to grow by inviting in their advice. 
David White says in his book, Crossing the Unknown Sea, real undying loyalty in work can never be legislated or coerced. It is based on a courageous vulnerability that invites others by our example to a frontier conversation whose outcome is yet in doubt.